Now, while we're on a roll, let's talk about the area for a circle. Can we use the same approach? That is, can we use our formula for the area of a rectangle to calculate the area of a circle? And the answer is yes. Once again, I need a circle. And as in the case of the triangle, I'm going to start by drawing a few lines on my circle. One line there, and another line here, and one more line over here. Good. Next, as with the triangle, I need a pair of scissors. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut along each of these black lines. One more cut. That's my circle cut up into wedges. I'm now going to take each of those little wedges and I'm going to rearrange them as follows. And one more piece there we are. I've taken that circle, cut it up into pieces, reorganized the pieces, and effectively created a rectangle. And there we have it. I've taken the circle and recomposed it into what looks like a rectangle. Now I can use the formula that we have for the area of a rectangle to determine a formula for the area of a circle. I've called this part of my rectangle the length and that side of my rectangle the breadth. Now some of you who are watching might be concerned you might say well this rectangle doesn't have 90 degree corners. I could actually take this little wedge, cut it in half, pick up half and put it there and you'd be happier. For now I'm going to leave it like that. And I'm going to say that the area of the rectangle is equal to the length times the breadth. And hence I can conclude that the area of the circle is also equal to the length times the breadth. But length and breadth aren't really properties of a circle. So we want to replace length and breadth with dimensions that are related to a circle. Now, look carefully. This edge of the rectangle is what to the circle? It's the same as the radius of the circle. So I can replace the breadth with the radius. But length and breadth aren't really dimensions that we associate with a circle. So we want to replace the length and the breadth in that formula with dimensions that we associate with a circle. Let's do so now. I've already substituted the breadth with the radius of the circle. Why? Because if we look at our rectangle, then we notice that the breadth of the rectangle is really the same as the radius of the circle. That leaves us with the need to replace the length in the formula over here. Now, think about where that length comes from. These wedges here if I were to pull them out and put them together, would give me half a circle. And the top wedges, if I push them up and force them together, would give me the other half of the circle. So if you like, that length there is really one half of the circumference of the circle. This length is equal to one half of the circumference of the circle. So I can modify my formula to say one half times the circumference times r. Now, do we have a formula for the circumference of a circle? I'm hoping that you remember from your primary school work that the circumference of a circle is given by 2 multiplied by the constant pi multiplied by the radius. If I now substitute that into this formula, then I'm going to get 1 half times 2 times pi 
times r multiplied by the r that is already there. And when I tidy all of that up, I'm going to get a half times 2 is 1 pi times radius times radius, which we abbreviate radius squared. Pretty cool, isn't it? And those three formula make us very, very powerful because we can take almost any shape that you can imagine and cut it up into a combination of rectangles, triangles, and circles. And because we have a formula for each of those shapes, we can calculate the area of almost any shape that you can imagine. In another lesson, we're going to have a look at exactly that. For now, let's summarize those three formula. We've shown that the area of a rectangle is calculated by multiplying the length by the breadth of the rectangle. The area of a triangle is calculated by multiplying the base and the height of a triangle and dividing all of that by 2, often summarized as half times base times height. And finally, we've shown that the area of a circle is equal to pi times the radius of the circle squared. I hope you've enjoyed watching those three formula being developed. But I also hope you've come to realize what power we have in knowing just one formula when it comes to our attempts of trying to quantify the world. For now, you will find a number of questions on our website at www.learn.co.za. Please complete these questions to consolidate what we've explored in this lesson. Till next time. Summary. In this lesson you learned that we can use the formula for calculating the areas of rectangles, triangles and circles to calculate the area of almost any other shape.